Welcome back, y'all. I'm doing this video today because I'm not afraid to admit when I'm wrong, and I'm also not afraid to look at all the evidence. That being said, I've gotten into it recently with some of the commenters on the videos I've published related to Dr. Stephen Gundry. And one of the assertions I've made is that Dr. Gundry does not have any published research related to the topic of nutrition. I didn't actually say that in either of the videos, but I did say it in the comments. And I came to this conclusion by typing his name into the author field on PubMed and looking at the results. Of the 10 studies that Dr. Gundry is the author of, none of them are related to nutrition, and they're all related to cardiac surgery or pediatric surgery. One commenter then linked to this study and pointed this out to me. This is Dr. Gundry's research on the topic of nutrition. An at-risk population with endothelial dysfunction was made to eat a diet that excludes beans, legumes, grains, nightshades, and fruits. The diet they ate focused on leafy green vegetables, olive oil, grass-fed protein, and shellfish. In addition, they were given supplements containing fish oil and polyphenols. Now, I can already hear the peanut gallery complain, you're not enough of an authority to speak on Dr. Gundry's prestigious research. So I asked a few people in the plant-based community who are more qualified than myself for their opinion. It's important to realize these are not official policy statements from these people on Dr. Gundry's research, rather just me asking them to read the study and give me their opinion when they got a chance. So that's what it is. First up, Dr. Pam Popper. All right, let's have a look at Pam's comments on the study. This is a short-term study in which numerous supplements were taken in addition to eating copious amounts of animal foods and shellfish. At the end of six months, there was a slight improvement, which was reversed after one of the supplements was discontinued. All right, I'm going to pause reading her comment for a moment and show you what she's talking about in Dr. Gundry's study. Ten of the patients stopped taking one of the supplements after they improved their artery function. The supplement was a polyphenol supplement, and after they stopped taking it, all ten of them developed endothelial dysfunction, continuing to eat the same diet, I assume. All right, back to Pam's comment. Many things are not so good here. Short-term follow-up, six months. Most likely the supplement caused the short-term effect, but who knows since the study was not well designed. Study design not good, findings questionable. I think I'll stick with Dr. Esselstyn's 31 years of follow-up demonstrating his diet prevents events and deaths in almost 100% of his patients. Thanks for the insights, Pam. I'll put a link in the description for her channel. Next up is Yvonne Blasquez, aka The Shredded Scholar. This gentleman continues to impress me not only with his capacity for fitness knowledge, but his enthusiasm for the science behind plant-based nutrition. Yvonne's opinion on Gundry's study reads as follows. This is a typical which came first, the chicken or the egg problem. The benefits of the high vegetable intake potentially negated or mitigated the animal product consumption. Also, we have the caloric restrictive nature slash benefit of cutting out fruit, grains, and legumes. By cutting out these foods, they probably inherently created caloric restriction, which may have potentially confounded the study results. Thirdly, we have the fact that this is a high-risk population which automatically influences the physiological response to any kind of treatment. In other words, something better will lead to better results, but something optimal will lead to optimal results. Perhaps they would have achieved better results had they consumed beans in moderate amounts and so forth. The biggest issue here is the lack of acknowledgement of the gut microbiome and how an altered microbial environment can actually create adverse effects to commonly healthy foods. It has to do with colonization of the gut microbiome, in which people who eat meat tend to colonize meat-eating bacteria. Thus, they may not metabolize legumes as well, which does not prove that legumes are not healthy or good for us. In a nutshell, he's cherry-picking information, and I remain skeptical and critical of him. Thanks for the insights, man. Link to his channel in the description. Alright, I did find one other study published by Dr. Gundry on the topic of nutrition. It's this one which emphasizes the role of leafy greens in the diet. 
It's important to mention that both of these studies were published as poster abstract presentations in the supplemental section of this journal. I don't know for a fact that studies published in the supplemental section receive the same peer review process as those published under the main table of contents. Okay, so this study has a very similar design and diet intervention, and it emphasizes the role of leafy greens in the diet. I think that supports Yvonne's opinion that the role of vegetables played a more active agent role than the role of the meat in the diet. Next up, it does mention that two patients stopped one of the supplements, again the polyphenol supplement, and both of them developed endothelial dysfunction once they stopped taking the supplement, which is exactly what Pam Popper noted in the first study. Not so good. What do you guys think? He's got two short-term studies that include refined oils and animal products and supplements and emphasize leafy greens, and he's claiming that heart disease is caused by lectins found in beans and grains. Let me know what you think down below. Little chapter, my editor said, you know, you're obviously a nutcase, we know that, but <laughs> you can't put that in here because <laughs>